Welcome to the third Makers YouTube, third secret, secret Sam. It's fine. I'm so pumped. This year, there are 12 different channels participating in this Secret Santa, and basically it's a classic Secret Santa roundtable. So in this video, I'm going to be making a channel a gift, and another channel has made me a gift that I'm going to be receiving and opening it up with you guys and seeing what it is, seeing who it's from, and I am super excited. Who doesn't love presents? The channel I have to make a gift for is Becky Stern. She is an awesome maker based out of Brooklyn, New York, and she does all sorts of cool craft ideas, different types of LED programming, and also some motorcycle action. So okay, I want to make her something awesome, but also probably like not harmful. And if I think back on the projects that I've made so far for this channel, It's possible a clean slate sort of a situation is gonna need to happen here. So Becky likes LED programming, crafty projects, and motorcycles, so I figure why not combine all three? So I got this scrappy old vintage motorcycle fuel tank. Here's my idea. I wanna make this motorcycle tank into a lighting sconce. So during the day when the lights are on, it will look like a cool industrial like wall hanging. But then when the lights go off, all of a sudden it transforms and just casts like amazing fractal shadows that maybe move and maybe with some colorful programming. So this is what I'm starting with and that's the idea. Here's the thing. I love the challenge of trying to make something startlingly beautiful out of something that seems to exist in total contradiction to that possibility. But the reality of that is basically this. To remove the rust, I used a little hack with some white vinegar and rusty nails. And I would swish it around and then let it sit for a while and swish it around and look around and see if anyone in the studio was looking at me weird. And I dumped it out. And frankly, at this point, now it just smelled like gasoline and vinegar. Good enough. I used a laser level to draw out a line where I approximately needed to cut this. It's a super awkward shape and I only had one tank, so I was a little nervous about making this cut, but there's only one place to start and that's doing it. This here is a perfect example of why making things is so great. Because while almost everyone in the world can understand or have a picture in their head of what a motorcycle gas tank is, all of a sudden when you're making something out of it, you engage with it on a whole new level that you just wouldn't be able to otherwise. So like here, I have to cut one open and you start asking yourself these questions like, what does that entail? Where do you make the cuts? Why is this thing so weirdly shaped? Is this like cutting a guy in half? Or is this going to be something completely new? And of course, will casual amounts of fire ensue? Obviously, yes. The real test after cutting into it was putting it down and seeing how level it was, and also, you know, being able to hold it up against the wall for the first time and be like, uh, is this actually going to look good? <laughs> too aggressive? Cool. Is it too aggressive is a recurring question that I have to ask myself about the things I make, and that's all I have to say on that point. It's a solid maybe, folks. A solid maybe. <laughs> I now have three problems to solve. One, a lighting source that can be programmed. Two, how to mount it in a non-janky way. And three, create metal cutouts that will make cool shadows. Quick timeout and PSA here. It's come to my attention that a lot of the other YouTubers who are participating in this are being a lot more like Santa-y and festive about it and <laughs> Doing that literally didn't even occur to me. So I'm just gonna edit in reindeer with flaming eyeballs throughout this video. And please understand that as an expression of my holiday spirit. 
I cut shapes into scrap metal and spent not an inconsiderable amount of time in a utility closet playing with light. Like, a lot of time in the utility closet. Look at how cool this looks though. Even just with this janky mock-up, I started to get so excited. I could finally see it. <laughs> there is hope. Maybe I'm not crazy. During my first test, I realized that one, I am definitely going to need a directional light source. And two, I immediately got really interested in manipulating the shadow's movement. And I also made this template to test out different angles for the cutout strips to again, just see how I could create cool shadows. And basically the upshot of all of this experimentation was that I realized that when I moved my light source, okay, so here's my metal cutout, you know, motorcycle tank. So when I move my light source up and down like this, the shadows also moved up and down, which is pretty logical. But the more interesting thing that I realized when I brought my light source up and tilted it down, it made very clear shadows and it shortened the shadows. And then when I brought it back down sideways but turned it more horizontally like that, it made very long shadows that spread out that were also very clear and crisp. And being able to mechanically engineer an arm that could move my light source that way would be super fun, but there was no way I had that time and it would be very out of budget for this project. But here's the beautiful thing. And this just makes me so excited because it's like design at its finest. I don't know how intimate you are with motorcycle fuel tanks, but they have a curve to them. And I realized that I could mimic the light source moving just by having a big grid of LEDs and only lighting one at a time. And the curve itself of the motorcycle tank would make it so that when the light went up, it pointed down. And when it moved down to the side, it would point horizontally. So I was using the tank itself to give the movement that I want on these shadows. And I just love that element of design and things fitting together. The final light has three buttons, one on off switch, one that changes the color to a whole variety of different color options, and one that freezes the animation. Cause you know, sometimes you just want a light to be on and not to have a flapping butterfly motorcycle tank right in your face. You know what I'm saying? All right, next step, how am I going to hang this thing on a wall? Honestly, the mount was easy. I designed this laser cut piece that functioned both as a structural support for the tank light and also could hang neatly on a cleat. The real challenge was welding it to the 22 gauge, very thin motorcycle tank, especially when I was welding this quarter inch rod to it and there was zero proper alignment. Honestly, these welds looked like garbage, but the reality is they showcase some of my best skill. Next was cutting out the final shapes of the sides. I decided to stay with hand cutting the shapes instead of laser because I found that I actually really like the more organic forms and texture. I painted and riveted these into place. Last but never least, the scenic painting. I wanted this to be beautiful in daylight, but I didn't want it to look like a hand painted it. So I used this technique called scumbling where I painted darker paint washes as a base and then I lightly dragged a dry brush with light paint so it only picked up the most elevated textures. After many layers, this really turned into some magnificent industrial geode form, and I'm super psyched with the result. And now what we have all been waiting for, the final lighting test. I am so thrilled with how this came out. It really looks like butterfly wings, and I'm just amazed that I was able to turn this scrap motorcycle tank into something so ephemeral. The project truly combines some of Becky's favorite things, and for that at least, I really hope she likes it. Here it is with some different color options with the wing animation. It's really quite mesmerizing in all forms. And with the animation frozen. And now I'm going to hit the button and switch to the color changing option, but with the animation still frozen. The video of it came out a lot darker, so here's a still image to be able to see more of what it was like in person. <coughs> oh my god. The doorbell just rang, and it has to be my secret Santa gift. So we're gonna go check it out. I'm gonna tilt the camera up because 
you can't see how messy my apartment is. This has to be the gift because it's so late. Um, okay. Um, it's from the Hacksmith. Oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna carry this in. It's gonna be really awkward. Oh, it's kind of heavy. <laughs> Try not to lock myself out of my apartment while I'm doing this. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna switch to that camera. I... This gift is from the Hacksmith. <laughs> Okay, where's my knife? The Hacksmith is an incredible channel based out of Canada and he makes the coolest projects. He actually does a lot of mechanical and metal designs like me. Just, he has like a much higher budget and an actual engineering degree. Is it fragile or dangerous? Like, I mean, knowing me and knowing the Hacksmith, like, Okay, right off the bat, I have a manual. I don't, I don't wanna look at the name. Okay, <laughs> I need to like climb up onto the table. So I have no idea what this is. <laughs> Lift it out of the box. Nope, nope, okay, okay. It's fine, it's fine. Okay. This does not look safe, like. <laughs> Look, it has my logo on it. I think it might be this way up. And honestly, I think, I don't know if this is just a cool pattern, but it actually kind of looks like an audio recording. Do you see that? It's like, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I'm riffing here. What is, what the what? <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I need to get off the table. Okay, just like fascinated by the construction of this. First, like it's all very nicely TIG welded, so good job. Um, I mean, there are some undercuts, but uh, you know, I'll give it to you. Well, it's obviously definitely this way up. I'm assuming the hose has to come out somewhere. Well, maybe it stays under here and a bottle of fuel could stay under there. I mean, he sent extra propane rings, so I know that propane is involved which is good because luckily I actually have a lot of propane on hand because that is my life. So all of these little holes here, like I assume fire comes out of here. I'm still trying to figure out what it does. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to flip the manual over. So I guess here's the big reveal. Ruben's tube. Fire equalizer and portable marshmallow room. Um, what? For Thea Ulrich, made by James Hobson, AKA the Hacksman. So to be clear, I definitely still have no idea what this is, but the manual was so well made with images and descriptions of how to set up my personalized Rubens tube, including of course, lighting it with a Hacksmith mini saber. Okay, I see you. And after a few aha moments. Oh my God, okay. I thought these were speakers, but I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to sound like an idiot. Because <laughs> I was like, how could there be speakers on something that's clearly going to be getting like really hot? <laughs> Warning, a fire extinguisher handy is also a good idea. That's basically the title of my memoir. So, rock on James. I was able to surmise its functionality from the directions. Okay, so this is incredibly cool. I went to art school, so I didn't know what a Rubens tube was, but after reading the manual, so basically I was right. This is referencing an audio wave and it's essentially cymatic, so which is you know a visual expression of audio waves. Flames will come out of here and this is a tube that's hooked up to the hose underneath there. And as the audio wave, you know, because higher frequencies, lower frequencies uh, change the waveform. It'll create different pressure inside of this and it will actually change the heights of the flames. So it'll be like a visual expression of the songs, which <laughs> 
It's just, oh my God, let's try this. I hooked up my propane tank to jump into my first test with the fire. Just gotta make sure the valve is tight and off. Okay. Now I wanna turn on one of the speakers and here I'm gonna pair it with my phone. Let's light it up. I'm very excited. That was a lot. So um, maybe open the valve a little bit too much. So a little more gentle this time. <laughs> okay, okay, we're good, we're good. Oh my God, let's play music. I have no words. No words. Which is why physics and dancing is so great. Just kidding, I'll tell you a little bit. The Rubens tube was invented about 100 years ago, and it's a physics demonstration often used to visualize the frequency of waveforms. I also downloaded a tone generator app on my phone. And you can see here that it shows the more subtle expression of the waveform, as pulses of pressure generate various nodes and antinodes in the tube, aka smaller flames and larger flames accordingly. This is just so amazing. You can also pretend that you are conducting the fire since it moves in step with the music, and that's a pretty fun game too. I'm truly an awe. This is possibly one of the nicest gifts I've ever received. It involves kind of all of my favorite things. I mean, obviously fire, design, physics, nice fabrication, music, movement, the ability to perceive a reality that exists but we aren't otherwise able to perceive. Kind of my button. It's possible that I had a little bit too much fun with this, but really, I mean, A, that's not even a thing, and B, the hacksmith made me this Christmas present. And really, what's a girl to do? Please subscribe, like, comment, tell me about your pet, what are your New Year's resolutions? Let me know what you think of this gift and also the gift I made for Becky. Honestly, I'm just psyched you're here and I love being able to share cool projects with you. So, happy new year. Oh yeah, and actually definitely subscribe. There is some crazy stuff going down in 2022 and I can't wait to see you there. Big plans, let's do this.